I'm not gonna do the typical intro because this for this video I don't feel like it because I have been one to amend a certain video I did a long time ago and updated to present day. For those of you who watch my channel that also watch my racing stuff, whether it be from NR 2003 or when I do the race reviews or whenever I speak about NASCAR, would know that uh, I hate Kyle Busch. I did a rant video about him back in 2013, I believe, so it was a long-ass time ago now, to me at least. And I still stand by a majority of that statement, however, I want to update it slightly. Now, first and foremost, I don't know how many fucking times I feel like I need to take a goddamn baseball bat and beat a fucking dead horse with it. Because Kyle Busch, this year alone, has probably had more incidents involving his mouth than ever any other year in the past. It is ridiculous how much Kyle Busch just loves to piss me off so damn bad because he feels the need to run his stupid mouth and say the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. This guy is like the Gene Simmons of NASCAR where he just loves to say whatever he wants and it probably pisses people off so much that he just loves giving out sound bites. It seems. Now, people often ask me, why do I hate Kyle Busch so much? When did the hatred start? Well, I'll tell you why. At first, when he came over to Cup, when he was in the five car for Hendrick, I didn't like him, but I didn't hate him. He was just sort of one of those guys I didn't care about. Because he just wasn't really doing much for the five car at the time. <clears throat> but then, once he got to Gibbs, it has all fallen apart year by year ever since. 2008... There were two specific incidents that happened that uh, got me to start hating Kyle Busch. First, and I know there's going to be a lot of people that will probably be angry about this statement, but <clears throat> first he wrecked Dale Earnhardt Jr. at Richmond in 2008. And I, and I think my good pal Kamikaze Games talked about this. The reason why that was not okay was because Dale Jr. didn't get to finish second in the race. You know, it goes back to that saying, and I agree with it. If you bump someone for one spot, it's fine. But if you wreck them and spin them out and ruin their day, then it's not fine. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, what Kyle Busch did there was not okay. And I'm not saying this because I like Junior. and I'm not even a big Dale Junior fan to begin with. I mean, I like him, but I'm not like a Junior Nation fanboy. I just respect him. <clears throat> and all this. If you guys know me, I'm more of a Carl Edwards guy. And actually, ironically, speaking of Carl Edwards, that brings us to the second incident from 2008. The way Kyle Busch handled that incident with Edwards at Bristol in 2008 after Kyle Busch got a bump and run from Edwards and Edwards went by and won the race and Kyle finished second, what was there to be angry about? You finished second! You had a great points day, you fucking piece of shit! Again, bump and runs are fine as long as the guy that you're bumping can somehow finish second. And Kyle Busch did, so what Edwards did there was fine. <clears throat> Again, not just saying that because Edwards is my favorite of all time, but still. And... Oh, man. 2009, 
he didn't really have a whole lot of issues except for one thing. Probably one of the stupidest things I've ever seen. When he won a nationwide race at Nashville, <clears throat> and he takes, in Nashville, the trophy he gave was a Les Paul guitar, and he takes it and smashes it! And I know a lot of Kyle Busch fanboys are going to comment saying, Well, he only did that so he could bring out his inner rock star! <laughs> he ain't no fucking rock star! He's a race car driver! It's a trophy! And you don't smash a trophy! Especially a nice one, a guitar, that I wouldn't mind having! And I'm not even a good guitar player! But still! What the fuck? <sighs> 2010. Not too much except for one big incident. Bristol. 2010, the summertime. First, he intentionally wrecked Brad Keselowski to win the nationwide race after what Kyle Busch thought he spun me into the wall on purpose <laughs> no you no he didn't you came up in front of him and put yourself in the damn wall and then because of your mistake you feel the need to wreck someone on purpose all because of something you did and I almost forgot before all this, Daytona, the Coke Zero 400, does the same damn thing that he did to Keselowski and come up in front of someone and put himself into the wall. This time at Daytona when he came up in front of Juan Pablo Montoya and wrecked himself while leading. And then he says, I got wrecked. Why would I wreck myself? Well, you did! But back on track to Bristol. So yeah, after the Keselowski deal, he then, in the uh, pre-race for the cup race the next day, <clears throat> just continues to show off his arrogance. And that's another big thing about why I hate Kyle Busch, is because he's just so damn arrogant when it comes to driving. He calls himself the best in the world. <laughs> Fucking Kurt blows you out of the water, you piece of shit. Either or. And then 2011 kicked in. And oh my god, there was a lot of things that happened with Kyle Busch in 2010. Or not 2010, 2011. Gonna have to add that out, except I'm not. But yeah, 2011 was when the year... The, 2011 was the year for the point of no return for Kyle Busch. First was the incident with Kevin Harvick at Darlington. All Harvick was doing was racing you. Yeah, he was bumping you, but hey, as long as you didn't get wrecked, it was fine. And then after Boyer got collected in the bumps between you two, you feel the need to spin the guy out? Really? No wonder why Kevin Harvick wanted to fight you at the end of the race. And I don't even like Kevin Harvick, but I like him a whole hell of a lot more than you, Kyle. And then you get to the Kansas truck race incident where he was upset over a pass for a position by Joey Coulter and then he comes up next to him and slams him in the door Joey didn't wreck you he just got by you yeah he wasn't quite clear but at least he didn't wreck you and cost you more spots and then you got your ass kicked by a senior citizen Richard Childress, he whooped your ass, and that's why you had to wear sunglasses the next day, and you probably had on a whole bunch of makeup, because your bitch of a wife, Samantha, probably did it for you, you piece of shit. 
And then you get to the truck race at Bristol. Where history repeated itself yet again from the year before in the nationwide race. You, Kyle Busch, turned up in front of Elliot Sadler, put yourself into the wall, and then you wait and wreck him. And on top of all that, you say in your interview, saying, yeah, I wrecked him on purpose, where's his paycheck come from? Like, can you not let things go, you piece of shit? Is that too much for you to do? And fucking... Oh my god. And then you get to the number one reason why I hate Kyle Busch is that he intent wrecks someone for nothing! For nothing! Texas. We all know about this, but in case you don't, let me give you a history repeat lesson. History repeat lesson? I don't even think that's a saying. A history lesson. It was the November Texas weekend for Trucks Nationwide and Cup. Kyle Busch doing what he loves to do and ruin the lower series by racing in those. We'll talk more about that here in a little bit. Don't worry. But yeah, he was running in the truck race at Texas, and on lap 14, lap 15, he and Ron Hornaday are battling for second, and they come across a lap truck, and Hornaday, all he did was move up to try to avoid hitting that lap truck and causing a wreck, and as he moved up, he gets really loose. Yeah, he put you in the wall, but you guys could have repaired your trucks and raced for the win still. <clears throat> and what does Kyle Busch do? Thinks Hornaday did that on purpose and puts him in the wall! Oh. Asshole! You know how Kurt Busch got a ton of hate for yelling at his crew and everybody on the radio? That's better than going out and intentionally wrecking someone on the track! Plus, not to mention, I thought his rants on radio, Kurt Busch's rants, were pretty damn hilarious! Not to mention, I like Kurt Busch! But his brother Kyle needs to learn how to... Uh, he needs to learn how to wait until you see replays or hear about it and hope that it's the real truth and not just what you want to hear. And maybe you won't have this problem! It's like, it's like my good pal King Fat, who I don't ever know will ever come back, in his WTF Moments video about Kyle Busch, why he keeps saying, Kyle, think before you act. I think that's the uh, moral of the story, Kyle. Think before you act in your actions, please. Too bad it ain't ever gonna happen because there is no curing the douchebaggery that is Kyle Busch. And I actually almost forgot to rewind the time a little bit. Michigan, 2009 nationwide race. Kyle Busch gets so angry at Brian Vickers for racing him? Uh, and thank God Brian Vickers tore his ass apart in his interview saying, Oh, I'm sorry, I thought I forgot it was the Kyle Busch show. I thought we was racing for a win. That's exactly what happened. What was so wrong with what Vickers was doing? He was just racing you. Oh, my boy. Oh, my God. 2012. I don't remember anything that happened with Kyle Busch in 2012. 2013. 
he wrecks Brad Keselowski at Kansas in the Nationwide, or Xfinity race, whatever it was at the time. <clears throat> Twenty fourteen. I don't even remember him having any kind of incident in twenty fourteen. Then you get to twenty fifteen when he undeservingly won a championship. <clears throat> That's reason the big reason number three why I hate Kyle Bush is that he got a championship handed to him because of the stupid chase format. I don't give a fuck if he came back and won a bunch of races after getting a broken leg. He did not deserve it for a multitude of reasons. One, he is not humble. And two, he nearly missed 33% of the season. And like I've said many times before, don't you think that the season championship should go to someone who has been there the whole season? Kyle Busch should have been nowhere near the chase. Nowhere near the championship. That championship should have gone to Kevin Harvick. Or fuck, Martin Truex would have been a nice choice that year. If it had to come down to this Final Four bullshit, I would have rather have won Harvick or Truex or hell, even Gordon. And I'm not a big Gordon guy myself. But it would have been a nice way for him to go out. <sighs> Last year, 2016, I should say, another Bristol incident with Keselowski. He does the same fucking thing turn up in front of the guy and wrecks himself and thinks he got wrecked on purpose and then you get to this year where it's not so much incidents on the track it's more his stupid comments this was the year when Kyle Busch became the Gene Simmons of NASCAR. Where his mouth has gotten him into trouble with fans and or people in the media. <clears throat> First, started with the incident with, with Logano at Vegas, I want to say. I'm pretty sure it was Vegas. Where... Kyle Busch and Joey Logano, two guys I hate. Logano, I don't hate as much as Kyle Busch, but still, not the point. They were racing each other on the last lap, coming up to Brad Keselowski, who was slow on the track, and Kyle Busch, now, this is almost similar to what happened with him and Hornaday at Texas, where they were coming up on a slow car. Kyle Busch... This was the one time where I said this wasn't his fault. He was trying to move by the two to avoid hitting him in the rear and causing a crash. And Logano wouldn't move down, and so Kyle had to slam Logano. But then after that, Logano got loose and forced down to the bottom, in which he tried to go for a move and got loose and got in the car and spun him. That was of nobody's fault. That was all racing deal because they were coming across a slow car. But Kyle Busch likes to constantly think he gets taken out on purpose because he has a persecution complex. Thank you, Kamikaze Games, for pointing that out because it's true. He goes up and tries to fight him, but guess what? Kyle Busch was the one who looked like shit. Granted, Logano got pulled away, but still, Kyle Busch lost a fight. Bloody and everything. And then goes on and does the same old shtick and say, He wrecked me on purpose! No, he didn't! And now we get to the dumb comments from this year that he has made. First, that Sirius XM interview where he talked about if they don't allow cup guys to run in trucks... 
he quits. You don't need to be running in truck races. In fact, <clears throat> before I get to the last part, let me talk about the number two reason why I hate Kyle Busch. Is him constantly ruining the Xfinity and truck series. <coughs> oh man, I need to take a drink. <clears throat> And this kind of goes back into <clears throat> a statement I made, I think, a year ago, I believe so, where I said, C get cup drivers to hell out of Xfinity and trucks, and I still stand by that statement. Granted, they are trying to limit them, which is good, but still, if it were up to me, they would not be allowed to run Xfinity or trucks all together. But if they had the race, I still say they only should run two races, and that's the play races. <clears throat> but, to the point. <clears throat> Ever since 2008, <clears throat> Kyle Busch has been a plague in the lower series. 2008, he constantly was winning nationwide and truck races. And that began to piss me off because of the fact Cup guys have been a plague in the lower series for roughly 10, 11 years. 2005 on back, it wasn't so much of a problem because the regulars in the series were able to actually beat the hell out of the Cup guys every week sometimes. <clears throat> Same with trucks. But then you get to 2006 when Kevin Harvick and Carl Edwards practically whooped everyone's ass. And it has gotten worse ever since. And the number one criminal of this is Kyle Busch! <clears throat> you see, this guy at this point has probably led over 18,000 laps in the Xfinity series and has... Is it 93 yet? I think we're getting around 93. 93 wins in the Xfinity series. If this were a regular, that would be really impressive. But for Kyle Busch, it's not. And you want to know why it's not impressive? It's because when you have a car that is better than everyone else's and using your cup pit crew... Oh, I'm so impressed! <clears throat> and now we get to the proverbial cherry on top of the fuck you Sunday was back after Homestead, after he lost fair and square to Martin Truex Jr. in the race and the championship, he does the dumbest thing! Well, not the dumbest thing, but the dumbest thing he has said ever! Ever! He's considering retiring after he lost... After he lost fair and square. I'm not going to yell anymore because I don't want to blow my voice out. <clears throat> All I'm going to say is, Kyle Busch, you are the biggest piece of shit in the history of this sport. <clears throat> and... <clears throat> I don't know how anyone can defend this guy. How could you defend a guy who has made himself out to being the Gene Simmons of the sport by spewing out stupid statements, goes out and intentionally wrecks people, and NASCAR doesn't do anything about it, except for one time, Texas 2011, but any other time, they don't do shit. Because Kyle Busch is so far up NASCAR's ass that at the end NASCAR probably tastes M&M's out of their mouths whenever they puke.
Now I feel like I've shortened my life about another ten years thanks to this goddamn piece of shit. But still, I have to get this all out. Anyone who defends Kyle Bush, fuck you. How can you defend a guy who intent wrecks people <coughs> at least, it seems like at least once a season, spews out the dumbest statements I have ever ever heard, whines about potentially not being allowed to race in trucks. You have your own team. You're in good hands with young drivers. Christopher Bell won a championship for you. What's the problem here? Well, anyways, before I have a heart attack, I'll just say this. To conclude... Kyle Busch has no redeeming qualities. He has no chance of winning over me or anyone else who feels the same way. He has zero chance in hell. <clears throat> and Kyle, the moment you do retire from the sport will be the happiest day of my life so that way I don't have to put up with the stupid shit you have done over the course of your career. <clears throat> and Kyle Busch, I hope you watch this and hope to realize this should be a wake-up call to you that maybe you should think to yourself and be like, you know, I have done stupid shit in the past. Maybe it's time I... <clears throat> <clears throat> maybe it's time I cool off and stop doing stupid stuff before I realize what really happened. Because that's been your problem, Kyle Bush. You don't think before you act. That's the moral of the story of Kyle Bush. He doesn't think before he acts, and he makes himself look like an asshole. Well, anyways, peace out, motherfuckers.